Hey everyone, you're back with me, Ian. A huge welcome to this week's instalment of DAP Radar Meets. The date is Wednesday, the 23rd of March. I hope you're all doing well out there in the cryptoverse. Crypto prices have started to arise from the ashes this week as an air of positivity washes over the space after a pretty tough Q1, to be fair. However, as we all know, it's probably not time to get out the champagne just yet, perhaps more the time to stay ahead of the curve. With that in mind and the ongoing hype surrounding blockchain gaming and play to earn, today we have with us Jamie Thompson from Vulcan Forged. I'm just going to do a quick sound check, but I believe I can hear him already. Hey, Jamie, are you there? Hey, Ian, nice to, uh, nice to meet you. Yeah, I, I, I do worry um, that I've got your echo of you coming through the microphone. Is everything OK at your end? Everything's good on my side, Jamie. If you could do me a favour, just until I jump back to you, if you just put yourself on mute for a few moments, and then I think sure. we'll be cool all the way through the call. No problem. All right, so let me get into some admin, and then we'll jump back over to Jamie, and we'll start, and we'll kick off the session. As always, we record these sessions for people to catch up later. So if you've missed any of the other shows, you can get them on YouTube. Just head over to our channel, search DAP Radar, and you can find hundreds of educational and analytical videos to help you on your DAP journey. So what's been going on this week? It's only the middle of the week, but it's already been another popping week. So some pretty early research showed that last week's Ape Token airdrop by the uh, BAYC NFT collection really highlighted the strength of decentralized exchanges out there. As holders were gravitating towards them over the centralized exchanges in the immediate aftermath of the airdrop. No surprises really given the nature of NFT holders, perhaps a more savvy blockchain user crowd, and they'd be more used to using decentralized exchanges. But we've done a, a quite an in-depth article over on the blog on that. Web3 domain names continue to gather pace this week as Telos launched its Telos name service and gave an overall lift to Telos dApps. And two of our three new dApps reports are out and they take a look at NFT collections performing well right now. The ones that are out so far are Dawa Darcels and Cyber Brokers. So go and check those out. And Pixelmon, one of the most controversial NFT collections to drop in 2022, is still ranking high up on the DAP Radar top NFT collections charts. Why are these so-called disappointing game characters raking in millions of, in trading volume? Our staff writer Christina dived right in this week. So head over to the blog or follow us on Twitter. You can stay way ahead of the curve as we endeavour to report on all the happenings in the DAP and wider blockchain space. So, without further ado, let's get to the matter at hand. Every week, I sit down with the brightest minds behind leading protocols, blockchain games, NFT projects, and DeFi dApps. We dig in, we get a better idea of what's in store for them, and get a clearer picture of the people behind the scenes. Most, most importantly, we give you guys a chance to ask the difficult questions. This week is a little bit special because we've got 300 bucks in PYR tokens up for grabs for the best questions. So don't be shy. There's no such thing as a stupid question, in my opinion. Just don't ask it twice. On top of that amazing offer, every attendee of today's AMA can grab a Pope, a proof of attendance NFT. You need to message Cornelia after the show to secure yours. Her Discord handle is Cornelia, hashtag 4817. Or you can find her easy, easier on our general channel because she'll send a message there and make herself known. But before we dive right in, and just to get everyone on the same page, let me give you a quick 411 on Vulcan Forge. Vulcan Forge is an NFT DAP ecosystem powered by a PYR token, which, got, which is on the Polygon blockchain. However, the NFT assets exist on VChain, and because Vulcan Forge covers all the gas fees, trading, trading on the Vulcan market is free. That radar tracks dApps on Vulcan Forge, and its integration last year marked the first dedicated play to earn gaming ecosystem being tracked by DAP Radar. Currently, there's a, a group of five core games on the network, with Vulcan Market supporting all of them as the marketplace. Vulcan Verse is arguably the best known game on the network, and is currently attracting around 1,500 unique active wallets a day into its ecosystem. Okay, Jamie, sorry, my man, turn your mute off. Let's do this. So, we can jump straight into the elevator pitch. And this is something I like to do where I want you to pretend that you're stuck in a lift with me. Uh, I've got a t-shirt on that says I've got loads of money. And I want you to impress me and tell me about Vulcan Forged and why I should be paying attention in under a minute. Go. Crikey. Well, that's uh, put me on the spot. So we're in the elevator. Right? Um, before I do this this, um, this this game, which is, does sound thrilling, um, I just wanted to correct that sort of the, the little intro you did, you did give us there. Sure, I think that's a little sure, bit outdated yeah, sure. because um, we, we have got our own blockchain um, now, Elysium. So the, all the NFTs and token are, are being moved to that. And we've got 12 games now, not five. But um, that's probably our fault for not updating our, our DAT radar 
um, blurb, as it were. And also, we've got 100,000 users now. So we, we've kind of hit that milestone a couple of days ago, which we'll announce. But OK, I've got one minute to sell you. Right. OK, so, <laughs> well, OK, well, I, I'd go with the fact that we're a game studio first. So development also has been in our... It's been in our blood for many, many years. We like making games. We like we, we we're passionate about what we're doing. Um, we, we moved into sort of crypto and NFTs as a secondary choice. So you you can just tell straight from the offset from from our community that it's very much sort of uh, you know our, our, everything's driven by our passion. Sort of you know we're not doing any sort of like massive token sales every second week, and um, we just en enjoy building. Um, we've learned very much from the past in terms of play to earn economies and what not to do. Um, and what to do, uh, and m most of all, I mean, one minute's very, very hard to sort of encompass all <laughs> games, but um, um, I'll just say Vulcan Verse is awesome, you should join and see you there. And if you don't join, you're, you're not getting off at your next stop, wherever you're going on this elevator. This is as you're holding your hand over that emergency stop button. That's right, right until you listen, listen to me. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> all good, Jamie, all good. And my apologies for the incorrect information at the start there. It, uh, yes, it was a bit outdated mentioning that, so my apologies there. And Jamie has corrected it, so all good. Okay, so you've kind of touched on, like, everything there in that one minute, which is why I asked people to do it, just to kind of put you on the spot and see if, you're, if you can do it. And you did a good job, Jamie, so don't worry. Oh, thank you. I've got a whole bunch of questions here. As I said earlier, we want questions from the audience. So stick up your hand and I'll put you on the stage for a, for a chance to win a portion of the $300 of the PYR tokens. So today's session is also a bit of a learning curve for me. As while I'm completely familiar with Vulcan Forge, I'm not a gamer as such. I'm really looking forward to peeling back the layers of Vulcan Forge to see where you guys are headed. I'd like to kick off with some basics, Jamie, as always. Can you tell us about the tell us about the company, about the ethos and the team behind Vulcan Forge? You, you briefly mentioned your gamers. And then why do you think you guys are best placed to kind of take on the challenges arising in the play to earn gaming scene right now? Um, yeah, so our, our company is pretty, pretty large. Um, there's about 70, 75 um, uh, staff to the whole Vulcan Forge uh, team. Um, 20 of us are in-house here um, over in Greece. So that, our, our headquarters in Greece, hence the um, Greco-Roman mythology and all the sort of fantasy that goes with it. I'm obviously not Greek, as you can hear from my accent. Um, but um, yeah, uh, everyone else is Greek, but they speak wonderful English, which uh, makes things easier for me. Yeah, I mean, actually, the Greco-Roman fantasy stuff didn't come in be come because um, I live in Greece. It just sort of it was just utter coincidence. We sort of established the Greco-Roman law um, many years back. So we, we've got these kind of fighting fantasy authors who've written game books and they write all our lore and stories, and uh, they always put a, a Greco-Roman twist on things because um, I don't know. I just I, I think we we all kind of feel that the, the, the whole fantasy elements have been played out. The Lord of the Rings, and you've had your ninjas and all these sort of different samurais all these kind of different sort of yeah. themes but um i think we're kind of doing a full circle on where myth uh, on fantasy sort of themes are going now and, and the old the old school stuff like the roman and the, and the, and the greco and the greco fan of greco gods and the, the vikings it's all making a comeback now so i think we position ourselves well um we, we don't really like to sort of you know say oh, we're better than any other company we, we appreciate everyone for, for who, who they are and what they've done you know big 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 hats off to like um, Axie infinity and sandbox and all the sort of pioneers in this space um we have had the luxury of being able to sort of watch these projects unfold and and see what 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 works and what doesn't. Um, one, one selling point I do think that we, we do have we don't sort of delude ourselves in, in thinking that the gaming market uh, and the crypto market can sort of work hand in hand yet. And so this is going to be this sort of um, utopian bliss or sort of marriage between the two. Uh, there's a real sort of anti nft vibe from the big gaming community and and crypto people don't really care about the gameplay as much yet so but what we're finding in, in, in the sort of this metaverse world and these metaverse worlds in blockchain gaming is that it's the idea of ownership um which is really standing out and, and it brings a lot more emotional attachment from, from from gamers when they actually own something inside the world so that's why these blockchain games can sort of get away with a, a little bit more ropey development a bit more transparent alphas and betas you know i always make the joke yeah. about our, our first vulcanverse alpha we had like avatar wigs were flying off the heads and you know was <laughs> the grass. But, but the users didn't care because they actually owned them as, as nft and, and and this sort of uh, this emotional attachment to to, um, to to your assets and also the also the ability that blockchain gives you in terms of creating an economy these two things have never never been available before and that what it's doing is actually creating a new demographic um, not gaming not crypto but but a whole new demographic people that weren't even gamers before becoming gamers um, so it's yeah it's very exciting I think that's a that's a great answer, Jamie. Like the um, the ownability and going hand in hand with the economy, and what you said there about you know under no sort of uh, illusions that things are not 
possibly where you want them to be at this stage. And uh, I think it's really cool that you've just said that because it's very true and we shouldn't kid ourselves. And and the point you made that I really found good was that sort of anti opposites there that crypto uh, sort of investors are not too bothered about the gameplay and that the game the game players are like really bothered about that but they're not too bothered about the earning capacity so we've got some work to do right we've got to put these things together but as you said it's, it's becoming a thing and it's and it's and uh, it's becoming more and more attractive so you nailed my second question which was all about the roman fantasy i wanted to know who was the person at the company that kind of is comes into work uh in a chariot like is there such a guy right yeah 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 no, i mean i mean and that's the wonderful thing about living in greece that you've got kind of law law on tap as it were like i mean just yeah. like a, when i was in england we learned about the battle of hastings and the wars of france you know here they learn about all sure. the olympians and the titans and the um uh, uh titanomachy or whatever you pronounce it but um um no no it, the vulcan thing actually came out a very bizarre thing of we, we didn't like the idea the, the word minting everyone used the word minting nft so we kind of came up with the idea of just yeah. forging nft just to sound sound cool and then someone suggested oh who's the god of forging oh it happens to be um hephaestuses um now of course that doesn't have the ring to it that uh, vulcan does <laughs> so we just sort of turned it into vulcan forge so all our nfts were just forged by vulcan and that sort of kicked off all our greco-roman sort of fantasy um ideas but um actually vulcan is the, is the roman god um not, not the greek but that's why i always say greco-roman sort of cover Greco my ass every time i talk about it yeah it's pretty, it's pretty cool though man like you're taking me back to my days of learning latin for god's sake like when i was a uh, much, much younger man much younger man learning the declension <laughs> yeah. cases of latin and you're taking me back but i always remember thinking it was very cool when we used to study the mythology i thought it was way more interesting they, they than were, learning and i don't know why we didn't yeah yeah you're right and, 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 <laughs> but, but they're really um they're really gruesome and beastly and like everyone's yeah. either married to each other or, or they're eating each <laughs> other or they're killing each other and it's just uh, but but yeah they, they've got this cool vibe to them but you don't want to read too much about the olympians because you know nightmares at night for your little ones <laughs> yes pretty dark stuff right but again for gaming it kind of lends itself brilliantly doesn't it it's got every aspect that you need it's got that sort of mystery that illusion that kind of darker side it's very cool so all right cool so we know who comes to work in a chariot and we know <laughs> that you guys are like and it wasn't um and it seems to have been quite a quick decision but a very good one because the name is cool so who's the so who's the kind of audience for Vulcan Forge right now? Like, given what we said at the beginning, is it gamers? Is it is it DeFi users? Is it blockchain advocates? Is it all of them? What's the thinking for, for Vulcan Forge yeah, right now? Exactly. And I think that's what, 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 what we're finding now is, is the emergence of what this demographic is. And all we have to base that on, all of, all of us, you know, ourselves, other big metaverses, other gaming companies, we can only use sort of terms that have been coined before, you know, DeFi users, gamers, but, um, and we can only use and re hash them so i can say all the above but i really do think that there is something there is a new a, a new demographic coming out of this i mean we're finding a lot of old people are actually coming into vulcanverse um who've never played a game before in their life but and they just love sort of far, um, yeah. farming or gardening and and uh, as i said people have never gamed before they just like the idea of walking around and owning something so it, i think it is an utterly new demographic so all i can say is um it, it's definitely all the above right now but um, yes, I mean, going back to the play to earn thing you said, it's a real sort of dilemma for us in, in terms of what play to earn means. It's just when you've got, mm. when, when, you've, when you introduce money into anything, it, it sort of, it, it just brings a different energy completely. And, um, you know, we didn't actually have a token originally. It was just, a, it was kind of a Minecraft, a fantasy Minecraft idea. And the minute you start putting play to earn economies in, you, 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 you know, you open up the Pandora's box. Of course, it's yeah. more appealing and brings more users in, but you start asking the questions, well, why are they here to the for the first place? Uh, you know, um, are they enjoying it? Do we even need to make it enjoyable if they're just sort of playing for, for the money? Um, and you, you kind of ride in between these two industries of like a really good game and allow them to earn as well, but keep it sustainable. So you're, you're trying to, tr you know, tr um, uh, walk that fine line between the two, but it's really hard. It's really hard to, um, to yeah, for, for, to link them together. They're quite incongruent ideas, to be honest. Playing, playing for yeah. fun and playing for money are very dissimilar. Absolutely. And I suppose like the sort of middle grey ground there is kind of gambling almost, isn't it? Just thinking out loud to myself right. here that uh, and I noticed actually on Vulcan that you've uh, you've recently added a, a dap. It's uh, Vulcan's poker. And I thought that looks pretty cool. Yeah, is that well, that you're, you're, is that kind of an avenue yeah, so, you're going to go down, or is it just an experiment here? Or? Well, well, we, we, we for, for legal reasons, we we, we don't um, allow tokens to be played with poker. I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't know, but when we, we're based in the EU and the UK, and sort of gambling online is very, very licensed. We don't want to sort of put ourselves up. 
um, risky for that. So we do use it, but you use experience points. So we have the sort of there was, off chain value uh, are experience points you earn across all the games. So you know there's no monetary value to them. But you can bet your experience points on a game of Texas Hold'em in poker. So it just gives another edge to it. I mean, as I said, we've got so many developers uh, that making the games isn't actually the hard part. We could keep making games every every month. We come out with a new little. We just released Tower Defense and the Temple Run. Well, yeah, Falcon Run, yeah. But yeah, you saw that. And um, it, it, the real hard thing is getting the the economy um really nailed down and not making the mistakes of the past and i think the key really is a sort of not to have a play to earn where it's this infinite money pit of people are just taking taking cash and leaving you've got to sort of incentivize them to put the money back into the game and that's where game companies really should be using their skills and it's sort of gamifying incentives sort of you know that level up like the world of warcraft grind to level 70 80 90. you know yeah, if people can yeah. do that so, so, so that's the key right now. So I think it's going to be not play to earn, but play to earn, to reinvest, to play more, I think is going to be the key. <laughs> <laughs> Let's come up with a new acronym for that one, right? Um, right. That's, that's, a great, that's a great way to describe it. I thoroughly agree as well. It's, a, it's an interesting balance, right, as you say. And I think with some of the traditional games, it was some of the more in-depth narrative and gameplay that did keep people coming back even though they may not have realized that there was something there whether it be a visual or a sound effect or a something that just kept your psyche wanting to come back so yeah i, I fully get it like you have to <laughs> tread the line carefully i think it's really interesting what you said about the demographics as well of kind of the users you said you know surprisingly there's some older users there and i remember mm. when i was working in mobile gaming back in like 2012 and everybody kind of assumed that it was like 17 year old 18 year old kids with a mobile who were playing these games and actually when we dug in it wasn't it was like 35 year old females that had a lot of free time and a lot of free money so it was like uh, sorry not free money but like extra income know, so yeah yeah sometimes people get the wrong impression about who's doing these things so it's always interesting to find out because obviously we track unique active wallets which is kind of an anonymous metric you don't know who's mm -hmm. behind the wallet man woman uh, whatever so it's it's quite hard to tell sometimes but yeah, uh, yeah let's talk about the games man like because mm -hmm. uh, you said at the beginning like you what you wanted to talk about all of them at the beginning but just because we know that like vulcanverse is kind of the leading game and and, and has the most active users on chain as i can see here in front of me so just talk about the games man like um yeah just go through them like sure the yeah I'm, I'm, I'm... like yeah, absolutely. I won't cover them all in detail and bore the audience, but I mean, obviously, Vulcanverse is, is like a sort of, I said, a sort of Greco Roman fantasy, Minecraft meets sand, a sandbox meets World of Warcraft. So it kind of incorporates everything from sort of Second Life up to World of Warcraft and it, it, with, with decentralization, of course. So that's our big Greco Roman um, metaverse. It's, um, you know, I'd say it's pretty, pretty top notch in terms of um, graphics and when, what you can do with when you've, only got, when you've got real time sort of dynamic terrain moving around you. You know, a lot of these, you get a lot of promises of sort of unreal trailers or this next metaverse is going to yeah. look the most beautiful thing in the world and and all of a sudden these crypto companies can do which you know game studios haven't been able to do for, for years on end it's, it's just not feasible so we work with within our limits and then from that uh, everything's pretty much a spin-off so we use all the same nfts from falconverse in our other games you've got berserk which is a hearthstone game hearthstone kind of game with forge arena a sort of dota 2 battler so every every sort of game sort of incorporates this greco-roman law and, and includes the, the nfts um cross game um we've got a tower defense being released on mobile or the vulcan runner being um released on mobile um we're in a sort of day and age now where accessing wallets and sort of crypto sort of ecosystems is far easier than it was before you know so, uh, sinking a, a wallet onto the mobile is great so we really want to take advantage of that that big sort of mobile game addiction so i actually think even though vulcanverse is without doubt the most it's cost the most it's the biggest it's the most it's the grandest game it's the little games that we launch you know like tower defense and temple run and vulcan assassin which are these infinite games you keep playing until you die sort of and everyone pays a little bit of lava which is our secondary token to enter a pool in the day and at the end of the day half of those users you know get to take out some of the lava so it's a very simple deflationary um play to earn model but it's those games i think that will probably rack up hundreds of thousands of, of users eventually because everyone wants to sit on the toilet and play a quick game of tower <laughs> defense and see if they earn you know a bit of money from doing it so right dave you're so right like again going back to mobile games like 
not naming what we were doing but we were trying to build like proper games and then if i go back now and look at what they're doing the games are way more simplistic they're having way more success like it's what you say it's a quick hop in hop out have a bit of fun and then put it down again it's not like uh you know you're not trying to complete grand theft auto or something it's not like that but yeah it's a good point that you it's a good point that you make and the mobile market obviously as again as you say a very important market in this field and, and something that other people are perhaps not eyeing up so 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 well as yourself actually but um it's really competitive out there right now and it is you know, i mean uh, i mean the blockchain yeah. games game industry I, I think is still and i think people because we're most people listening in now and you and i are very sort of you know probably uh you know we, we're focused on the crypto world and the dApps world the dApp mm. world just like you guys are we, we forget that the gaming industry actually still dwarfs the blockchain game industry you know it's like a multi-billion i think five billion dollar industry when yeah. blockchain gaming is 300 million dollars only so we are still very early. so I, I i i it probably is competitive for some companies but i think ourselves and others should adopt the same approach is not not be competitive at this stage it's all about kind of just getting our foot in the door and see if there is a market i mean people are still paying to play games and they're happy doing it then um, you know I, i'm guilty of it myself you know i've got some tower yep. defense yep. games which i even pay for and stick another quid in for another go because they're fun <laughs> and they're enjoyable so it's still un uncharted waters to see if the play to earn idea is sustainable and if it's going to take off but i think um, blockchain gaming and, and play to earn are very different things. I always differentiate play to earn and metaverse. I think play to earn is a bit risky. I think I don't I don't know. I mean, maybe one day every game you have to earn from a game in order for a game to be successful. They expect you to, them to pay pay you out. We're not there yet, mm. obviously. But the whole mm. NFT ownership and metaverse part of it, I, I find absolutely fascinating. That is, you know, I said like uh, economies within a virtual world, uh, which is what I kind of define a metaverse is, you know, just being able to have like these, these structures and hierarchies and spending and earning within this sort of virtual world that's fascinating to me and i think that has potential to be to be absolutely enormous and of course um the bigger companies are moving in now to the metaverse world and and so obviously i, I guess follow the money is what they say yeah definitely and i think it's um like it's interesting i always think back to like those platforms like second life that kind of started this oh yeah, yeah you know what i mean like it wasn't in the same way but people gravitated towards it millions of users wanted to reinvent themselves in a virtual space give themselves a new identity and also form an economy in there and there's people in there making a, a living right so yeah the idea yeah. is the idea is not new and also the kind of idea of projecting yourself into the world via digital means that's also not new right like if you take instagram for example that's what people are doing so it's just kind of bringing it all together and then putting right. it in one place but the metaverse term is just being banded around like a hot potato oh right? so yeah everyone seems yeah. to be leaping in but what, what what do you think jamie is like the kind of right approach right now i mean you kind of touched on it but is it like some people are going for all out attacks some people are just kind of patiently building and watching what what, what are you well, guys thinking um, or yeah, I mean, well, from an investor's point of view, I think you should always follow the builders. Um, from the builders' point of view, like ours, uh, it's, it, it is quite hard to sort of work out what the U, um, the USP is and the KPIs are right now. I mean, it's not hard to get user user count up. You just promise them, you know, 10, 10 cents an hour yeah. just by playing, and, and that's not sustainable. But yeah, you're right. I mean, the metaverse, I, I have no idea why the word metaverse now is just being sort of bastardized and thrown around everywhere. I, I mean, you know, <laughs> Facebook's version of metaverse Facebook, and the right? yeah. yeah, I mean, it's very different. I mean, for, for them, metaverse is like like uh, VR goggles and holodex and all that kind of stuff and and for the blockchain us, us guys it's it's like a it's a virtual world with NFTs and you know it, it could, you know, even Facebook or Instagram itself is the internet's a metaverse I mean all it means is just like a futuristic yeah. world so I guess I, I guess the way forward really is I think second life you nailed it there they're way ahead of their time I think they even used mm. Bitcoin as a transaction in world when it they was did. like about yeah. 10 cents and I remember yes of course I did because I had about 3,000 bought at 10 cents and i lost the keys or something like that and it's one of those stories <laughs> oh, yeah, no. yeah yeah no, yeah don't worry i'm i'm over it I'm, and that, that always reminds me of that oh, welsh dude who, who lost it in, in in didn't he lose it in some um recycle some toxic waste dump he left a ledger yeah, with like, his hard a, drive he hard drive in the <laughs> i think to this day he's still trying to get in <laughs> <laughs> you would be though, Jamie. You telling me you wouldn't be there? I'd be right there with him, man. Yeah, <laughs> but they, 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 the council's saying no. You're going to get, you know, the radiation. <laughs> I don't care. I'll pay you this much money if I get that. I imagine I, I, I would have gone there myself. But yeah, but exactly, no. Man. I mean, yeah. 
I, I think economy, a real economy within a virtual world, which which is what blockchain enables, real sort of money and economy and changing lives. That that for me is what a metaverse is, and that's why we try and make Vulcanverse as kind of interesting and fun and different and as cool as possible. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Just to, we'll come back to metaverse stuff definitely because it's a big topic. But um, something is a bit of a personal question. Like at the time when you guys launched, there was other blockchains available to launch on polygon binance uh, sorry bnb chain ethereum even was an option what mm. was the motivation behind like what the way that you guys approach this whole thing because you could have just i don't know put these dApps onto polygon for example but mm -hmm. i like what you're doing because you've created this ecosystem but yeah tell us about that a bit more like the, the yeah. motivation there well, we're not really crypto people, to be honest. So we just put it on the first kind of chain that we heard about years ago. And, and we wish we didn't because, you know, it wasn't a great chain. <laughs> we, we, we chose like, um, I think someone's come online. Uh, we, we didn't we didn't choose a great chain. I mean, Polygon is good. I mean, the v, v chain isn't, unfortunately. And that's why we kind of decided to make our own sort of way forward with it all. But we just didn't know better. You know, you, we, if you don't know anything about crypto, we knew about sort of, you know, I, I'm a writer too. And and so gaming and writing and law and all that kind of stuff were our forte but not yeah. not crypto so we just took the, the first sort of um uh candy on a candy on a plate as it were so now now as we've got our own token our own play to earn mechanics we thought well you know making a blockchain now isn't actually you know as, as crazy and technical as you think i mean elysium is not breaking any sort of boundaries in terms of um you know blockchain technology which is a basis of substrate evm chain the cool thing about it is is like the more mm. the more it's used we, we plant trees and in, in, in these lands we've got in in spain and south, south america so it's, it's very green in, in that respect but um yeah no there, there was no sort of rhyme or reason for what we chose we just sort of went for the sort of you know the first person that said yeah put it on this chain <laughs> <laughs> i love your honesty man like that's and because you weren't crypto people it kind of makes sense they came up to you they offered something you thought perfect yeah you know, as you've answer the question great i wonder i wondered why and the answer is perhaps not what i thought but i, I love the honesty man um all right i'm just going to shift over to some questions from the audience we've got one guy called nora bubba bits are you there no sir no, no rabbits oh no rabbits there you go <laughs> are you there sir hello mm -hmm. Oh. No, yeah. we get this as well on our on our stage. People pop up and probably change their mind or don't know what they did. Ah, Paz is here. He never changes his mind. How you doing, man? Ah, I'm great for all you. Very well, thank you. What's your question, man? Uh, so basically, I have two questions. Uh, one is regarding games. I am a gamer, and uh, uh, earlier I used to just play games, and uh, the hacks and uh, cheats were the major concern for uh, is the major concern for any game. So when it is uh, when the games are monetized, then this threats become much more potent. So I would like to know what uh, fair uh, play ma measures you guys have uh, taken up for making this platform a secure platform for. Uh, all the gamers over there yeah so um brilliant brilliant question i mean it, it's not only uh, a reality it's 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 a total nightmare i mean even in normal normal games where it's off chain yet people sort of gaming the system all the time and when we've got real money involved we have found the most bizarre I exploits that people have found you wouldn't even think about them finding you know sort of foraging on top of a volcano at a certain time of day gives you extra experience so you, you we're never going to avoid that but we we, we um we've dedicated two, two two ways to avoid that one we have a team called the Vulcan police who are constantly monitoring everything coming in and experience wise the second the second way and this is the most important way i think technically speaking is we have a cool down system so in any sort of larvae worm which is our secondary token it, it starts as cold lava um so um for three days it's an off-chain value and then after those three days you know if there's no sort of ab abnormality found by the team it's converted into hot lava on chain um, and the other thing we have is where there's a, there's an enormous criteria you have to reach before you can cash out your 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 first winning. So you have to earn ten thousand XP, which is you know easy enough after you just grind from games and games. So we've got these kind of obstacles and sort of thresholds to meet before you can sort of cash out your tokens. Otherwise, you're just asking for trouble. <laughs> Okay. And uh, one more thing I wanted to ask: uh, there were some news that. Uh... Sorry. Carry on, golf wars. Oh, oh, by my 
myself. Ian? Um, I'm Jamie, can you hear that? Connectors. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now, yeah. Did you hear the question just a second ago? No, then? I didn't. No, I didn't hear the question. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, one second. Uh, um, oh, I can hear it now. Uh, a delay there. Hello. Yes, go ahead, Golf Wars. No, he he's muted out when he starts to uh, when you put him on the spotlight. I think. Hello. No. Hello. All right, we've got a problem with the mic there on Golf Wars. Golf Wars, do me a favor, send me your message on a mess, send it as a, as a text, and I'll ask it. No problem, okay? I know you can hear me, so that's cool. Um, sorry about that, Jamie. That's all right. Um, you can hear me now, though, right? We're good on the yes, channel, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Let's move to another question. I've got Big Boldy, uh, prospectors.io. What's your question, man? Hey guys, um, I'm just, uh, you know, I haven't had a chance to check out the project yet. I'm wondering what the uh, entry levels are. Um, you know, I've seen some other other games where it's just really out of reach for me. And uh, I'm just wondering, you know, if there's a free entry and then uh, um, uh, an entry that is, you know, recommended to get a strong start. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, one of the first things we decided to do before we created the ecosystem was making sure it wouldn't be pay to play ever. I mean, all our games are free, um, whether it's Vulcan, Vulcanverse, you can enter as a scholar. We call them sedalians because it fits with the law. You can sort of rent land for free. In fact, you could download Vulcanverse now, rent land, and you could even start earning. Um, you split it with the owner, um, of course, so it's not all all fun and games. But yeah, all our games are free. We, we kind of made this sort of massive invisible ladder where it's possible for anyone to really enter without paying anything, but sort of work, grind their way up to sort of earn some experience and some lava, convert that lava to USDC or, or PYR and then buy an NFT with it. So buying NFTs isn't a requirement to enter, but it also it makes your experience sort of easier in terms of earning. But yeah, all our games are free to enter. Um, Vulcanverse, if you want to play that now, you literally can rent out land today and, and start fighting and foraging and playing. But um, yeah, no pay to play for us. Nice. Good question. Hello. Good. Nice question. Uh, Agamidodawigwe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, man. You tell me how to say that. No problem. No problem. I'm okay. Agamidodawigwe. Okay, I got it. <laughs> What's your question, man? All right. <laughs> So my my question is this: I want to know if uh, the criteria for playing the game. Do I have to be? Uh, do I have to own uh, some amount of PYR tokens before I'm allowed to play the games? That's one. Then number two is I went through the site, the website, and I want to know the difference between lava. I saw that you earn lava while you play the games. I want to know the difference between Lava and the PYR token. Thank you very much. Sure. Well, um, as with uh, the first question, no, you don't need PYR to play any of the games. Um, you, uh, you can literally download Vulcanverse now and, and enter and rent land for someone from free. And you can sort of walk around and do all the quests and everything else are doing and, and you earn Lava. So Lava is, is like a deflationary, uh, not deflation, sorry, if, inflationary infinite token. It's like SLP for Maxi. So that's the token you earn by playing. You can actually earn it by playing Berserk now uh, for free. You can literally go on the game, on the gate, on the web now and beat a few people and earn I don't know, a couple of dollars. Um, but the uh, the only thing we have is that you have to earn enough experience in order to sort of cash that out. Our plan is to kind of rope you in so you never, never leave and reinvest it into the ecosystem. But um, but yeah, so PYR is a, sort of, is, is a primary token. It's used for settlement, for staking, for, for NFT purchases. And Lava is the play to earn token. It's a secondary token you earn, which is... Um, and we sort of made some changes on SL, SLP. Uh, we learned from some mistakes SLP made in that we sort of don't just... We, we limit how much Lava is produced every day. There's only 24,000 Lava a day that can be earned. Um, so that's divided by how much experience you earn per the hour. Um, you can only cash it out after you've earned enough experience. And also there's a three day cooling period. And there's lots and lots of use cases for lava. Otherwise, if there's no use cases for lava, then people are just going to take it and sell it. So the idea is to kind of incentivize use for that. But um, no, absolutely. You can go ahead and play now um, for free. No problem. Nice. Uh, I see No Rabbits is back. 
are you able to no all right cool okay thanks for those questions guys that was some wicked questions there uh, any more just put your hand up and i will bring you onto the stage so jamie I mean, there was the, the questions there were around kind of earning and like how do you, <clears throat> sorry, how do you earn in the Vulcan forged ecosystem, as it were? And it, what what you're describing is like this complete. What I think I've understood correctly is like a complete loop here, where you're carrying tokens from one game to another, and you're kind of keeping people inside this ecosystem as much as humanly possible, right? And and just to add to that question a bit, like what other DApps do you plan to bring to Vol uh, to Vulcan Forge? Will there be a Dex? Uh, like Axie did with Katana, like what's the direction there? Yeah, um, actually, we 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 already do have our decks. It's um, it's called Vulcan decks, and um, it's it, it's cross chain. We we only list gaming tokens there, which is the, the collaboration with Sandbox, um, where you if you stay the, the the Vulcan decks is basically very similar to Pancake Swap and Uniswap. The only difference is that from your LP tokens, you actually farm NFTs from these different games so people are locking up sort of um yeah we've got a pyr sand a pair we've got a pyr and um uh sin and hustle and we, we've got axie coming where you can win an nft from just locking up things so it's a gamified decks but yeah um vulcan assassins coming out tower defense is coming into better on the android um honestly we've got so many games coming out it, 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 as you said before it's it's the it's the economy and ecosystem we have to nail down perfectly right and and uh, you were correct in what you said it's about making sure that everything is incentivizing users to stick around because you can't just give out yeah. free money someone's got to pay for that money that's been given out so you've got to find ways as a game company to keep them reinvested so they can take that you know two dollars they've earned now or they can reinvest that two dollars into a, into a higher sword or weapon or, or whatever and then they could earn more yeah. further down the line um but yeah i think ourselves and every other company are still kind of you know we're pretty much winging it as we're going on and as, as long as you <laughs> listen, to, listen to the community and what works and what doesn't then then you're okay but it's it's a new world well, it's, uh, honestly i'll say it again like I'm, I'm loving the honesty of the answers and i think it speaks volumes for for you guys because um yeah, there's a lot of projects out there and as you say getting the economy right is, is is the key to all of this it's very difficult you can't just throw tokens around and then expect the economy to to be stable and we've seen right. projects that arrive and like two weeks later they're gone and people have invested heavily and it leaves a really bad taste in people's mouths so i think these sort of sessions i like to do them so that people can kind of sift through what's out there you know and the fact that you guys have been around for a <laughs> How many years already? Three, four years uh, already three, on this? Yeah, three. Well, one yeah. year, last year, things kicked off, yeah. So it's it's pretty big. Like, I mean, even in, in the blockchain world, I think even six months is a pretty long timeline, mm -hmm. right? So, um, <laughs> oh, uh, no rabbits has just sent his message in. He said his mic is dead. Can we ask if Battle Chess will become available for mobile and if there is a PYR lava mechanic built into Battle Chess? Yeah, Battle Chess is actually live now on the web. And, and in fact, this week, from now, Lava is actually integrated. So if you play Speed Chess now on Vol Battle Chess with a, with, with a multi multiplayer, um, you, you, can, you can earn Lava and XP. It's worth noting, we actually are moving all these games to a standalone, both mobile and a standalone computer. I mean, I think it's a myth to think that people won't download a game on a computer anymore and you have to sort of um, cater yeah. to to countries that don't have computers. I mean, World of Warcraft has millions of users and, and they all download the game. So we're, kind of, we're going to make this kind of Steam kind of launcher, like it's going to call it Frenzy, where you can sort of open up all the games from one place. But yeah, chess is going mobile. Um, so the answer is yes to that and you can earn Lava now. Pretty cool, pretty cool. I think the chess one's quite appealing. I think a lot of people have been watching that program on Netflix recently. I can't remember the name of it now. Queen oh, I love Gambit, it. Right? Uh, what was it? Oh, <laughs> with that lady, she was wonderful in it. Um, I loved oh. it. I've never played chess in my life, Queen. Jamie, but now, yeah. now I'm ready. Like, <laughs> it's, oh, it's yeah. one of those things. Do you, um, do you think that Vulcan Forge can act as a kind of friendly on-ramp to, to new arrivals to the crypto space? Because we've seen this kind of gamified DEXs becoming an on-ramp people are finding out about pretty complex DeFi mechanics through games, basically. Do you think you guys can act as that kind of on-ramp, and is it something you think about? 
Yeah, I, I think we, are, we 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 do because we're sort of we, we're very much poised in the gaming scene. There's a lot of games that are reaching out to us, asking how they could put their NFTs on and and, and and turn things into a play to earn economy. And of course, we always say, well, listen, we'll help you and we'll get you sort of set up with your tokens and blah blah blah. Um, but you have to move to Elysium. There's always a catch. I mean, for us, it's not a financial game. It's just we want more sort of users on our blockchain. So in that respect, we're very much a, an onboarder for a lot of games that want to go on the blockchain. We didn't know how to do it before because we had to do go through this learning curve. We had no idea what a yeah. white paper was, tokenomics. You know, um, we, we knew what NFTs were because we made a digital art NFT site way back before OpenSea was actually even around and it just didn't take off. So we were we, interested in NFTs for many, many years. Um, so, yeah, in that respect, we, we're, any, anyone who's making a game or wants to make a game, do reach out to us because we offer free development support, grants, you know, and obviously we've got a, a Vulcan Forge that has a bit of a name to it now so we can sort of help promote you guys. Mm. So we're all open for... Um, God, it sounds like a sales pitch. It's really not. We're, we're just here to help you. Just, just use <laughs> <laughs> No, I think it's very honest again, and that's what it's about. You're trying to build an ecosystem. So in order to do that, you've got to attract builders into the into the ecosystem. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's what every blockchain is kind of trying to do right now. But uh, I think yours is particularly attractive because you're not a jack of all trades. You're a master of one. So it's, it's a very nice proposition for gaming um, yeah. devs, isn't it? I think so. Just yes. kind of. This is a bit of a random question, Jamie, and forgive me if you don't want to answer it, but just listening to how you've kind of explained things and the fact, you know, what you said about using VeChain and stuff like that. I've just got a question. Like, can you tell us about over the last couple of years, any significant, like really big wins or really big kind of fails where now you look back on it and you're just like, oh, my God, I can't believe we did that. Or is there anything like that really sticks out other than um, you having all those Bitcoins in uh, Second Life, obviously? <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about the under the under. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I, I don't want to sort of um, crap on anyone's investments, but I think choosing choosing V Chain was one of the worst decisions we made to start with. Um, Polygon was great. I think they've got um, I think they've got a little bit congested lately. We, we don't. Um, I don't. Nothing bad to say about Polygon. I think they're doing doing great. But I, um, um, I think not doing enough research on the whole whole what a blockchain was to start with was our main. Our main fault. Um, some people, we're very, we, we share every every day. We share development day, daily dev notes of what we're making. So people see everything very, very rough. And um, I don't regret that. Obviously, some part of the community would, would prefer if we didn't launch anything to it was completely ready. But we do like sort of sharing it as is. I think that because, OK, it, it frustrates people because there are bugs in it. But it also shows that we're working. It shows transparency. It shows we're there. And people can see it evolves. So I think 99% of the community do prefer that. Um, but there obviously are some releases I wish we did wait, you know, a, a couple of days before we just pushed out. We, we tried to, to do too much in, in, in too short a time. That was our our main problem and people don't like timelines not being met and you say this that, and the other and it sort of brings down trust yeah. a bit um but other than that no we're enjoying the journey and um if it, it, it's thoroughly it's just for passion now it really is that's the only reason we're involved in this now it's really cool like, I, I completely feel you with like when you're putting hard dates onto things is that kind of a lesson you've learned now about putting hard yeah, dates yeah, on? That's <laughs> my fault. I, I get carried away i mean i still run the twitter account for goodness <laughs> sake because we started with a community of um 20 it was just uh, me and a couple of devs and 20 people and now of course we've got 70 devs and 100,000 people and blah 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 and it was just um i was very got always very excited with hypes and like oh tomorrow this is coming out and you think, yeah, <laughs> people are actually literally taking one well, and they it's should sweet. do they, they take your word for it and they're waiting for it. it doesn't come out and you're like well come on it doesn't have to come out today but in crypto you know you've got to keep dates so and now we just give months at the most when we're saying something's being released i'm far more yeah. careful yeah. Yeah, I think that's no, a good point you just made there in this space, particularly with all of the kind of nuances that have arisen over the last kind of 10 years. Honesty has become the main kind of commodity here, isn't it? If you can deliver on what you say, then you're putting yourself well ahead of every uh, than a lot of other people. So I think that's a really good way to go about it as well. Um, do you think, Jamie, that this whole I mean, we spoke about it briefly, but this play to earn as a, as a thing. Do you think it's a bit of a fad or do you think it's the beginning of something much, much, much bigger? Like, how do you personally, maybe not just all, maybe not focused on Vulcan Forge so much, but how do you see it like progressing in the coming two to three years? I've got my mm. own ideas. Like, I think we'll be having this meeting in in haptic suits in three years. But <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> um, 
Yeah, yeah. Well, it's how I think with any sort of trending asset or, or or buzzword, you're going to get a lot of crap out there and a lot of lot of, lot of scammy stuff, a lot of hype and a lot of um, confusion of where things are going. I mean, just saying with the internet came around, you sort of you, you couldn't you, people probably didn't think that was going to stick about and sort of the cream yeah. rise that rose to the crop, as it were. Um, the the bit the businessman in me and the selfish part of me wants to say, oh yes, this is it. This is the future. You know, metaverse, metaverse all the way. But the truth is, uh, we don't know until um, I think a direction has been formed in what in what sells in what in what gathers steam um and, and i think we're all well the honest companies anyway the ones that are doing it for, for for enjoying doing it we're all sort of working towards what what is working and what isn't um but yeah the word metaverse is being is being um, is adopted by absolutely everyone i mean some games just stick metaverse in them now because they have nfts i mean i don't even know what what, what the word means anymore but um i, I i'm very very bullish on on, on on ownership um within worlds i don't know if that's going to translate to games like as we know like just adding nfts NFTs of Fortnite, for example, I don't think that's yeah. going to do well. I, I don't think. Don't. I, I don't, no, okay. I don't know. I, I think Ubisoft sort of tested the waters a little bit with this, and they, they got a really sort of terrible reaction from their gaming community. I don't think kids at, at this stage care if it's an NFT or not because they don't understand what an NFT is. I, I always think you sort of judge success um, by a trend is, is when a, a child comes into the playground and, uh, and they're saying, "Well, does." does your game have an nft and if not it's not cool you know when, when that's when that's being said then then you can know that nfts and gaming is is here to stay but um for now i, th I think ownership of your assets and um an economy within a virtual world these these are just incredibly exciting things and 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 somewhat scary as well i mean there are some sort of philosophical implications yeah. involved here i mean you're, you're changing lives with how they act within a world and you get the same sort of um hierarchies and structures and and cheating as someone brought out before as you would do in, in in the real world because you're involving real money so there is a dangerous element to it all um in in yeah, both definitely. in both terms of metaverse yeah i think that's a really good point it, with everything you're going to get the dark side of it right that's what we saw with the internet that's what we saw with many things that those sort of things arise first but they give way to further evolution and more development i believe in the long run as well exactly you need that yeah yeah and just to yeah you yeah you need it basically like you need the sex dolls in order to get to fully functioning ai robots basically yeah that's a nice analogy wrong. interesting analogy yeah it works <laughs> i'm sorry i was watching a, a strange documentary the other day in my head um <laughs> so the ubisoft thing that you just mentioned there i'm kind of i'm not going to debate this with you but i'm kind of thinking that is it NFT's fault and is it the fault of the kind of tech of ownership or is it Ubisoft's fault for being such monopolizing people for such a long time? Do, do you understand what I'm kind of saying? I, I, I do. Yeah, but, but it, it was way, like, will you be the Ubisoft in 10 years? For example, do we need Ubisoft is kind of what I'm thinking. Well, yeah, that that I don't know. I mean, that, that again it is is hard to know. But I, I don't think it was the yeah. way I, it was the reception they got from their already established yeah. community, which, which just confirmed what I already thought that you're not going to convert, you know, billions, millions, whatever it is, of gamers suddenly to NFTs. Um, it, it's just like when we had the, this digital art NFT site. A lot of real artists who try to get into NFTs. I say real, I mean sort of you know proven sort of oil painters, whatever it is. When they sort of said they're doing an NFT on their Twitter. Um, the app, the reception they got from their followers were brutal. I mean, they, they got some death threat threats. I mean, people think that <laughs> NFTs kills a puppy every time it's minted or something. And uh, and I've no doubt there is a carbon issue with NFTs. But the the the, uh, the hatred these artists got was akin to the hatred that Ubisoft got for bringing NFTs. So the audience that these these companies, Ubisoft, for example, their existing audience isn't warm to the idea yet so it wouldn't make a difference if ubisoft you know implemented it in the most perfect seamless manner there was and and launched you know the best vulcan verse version there is um their yeah. existing audience aren't ready now whether or not they can take in the new demographic that we're all kind of sort of working with um yes perhaps they could but again do they need to they're selling far yeah. more you know centralized games than they would do if they launched a token yeah yeah i also think that as well like why would as a business decision you wouldn't be looking in that direction potentially because you've got a pretty hot market already right. and okay it may not last forever but it's already lasted a considerable amount of time and you're a leader so why change i mean the ownership thing for me just feels so logical that if 
you know, you know, a couple of years ago, I remember explaining it to people and being like, wouldn't you like to own all those loot boxes and all those things that you bought in that game that you don't play anymore, that you paid for? Wouldn't you like to trade them? Wouldn't you like to cash them in? And yeah. people kind of, the, the first reaction was, well, that's never going to happen, Ian. Like, that's impossible. Mm. But then it is happening. So that bit seems super logical to me. So I don't understand the kickback. And I think there's a bit of an educational gap, perhaps. It, it is an educational gap. Yeah, it is part of it. And, and one one important thing people have, you know, say about ownership of NFTs, I think, well, well, I own it in, you know, I own it in Fortnite anyway, the company's not going to take it off me, and they probably won't take it off you. And, yeah. and, it, and it is centralized in that respect. But, um, but then again, you could also say to be devil's advocate, well, you know, even if it was an NFT in Fortnite, if the game Fortnite goes, goes bust, then that NFT also loses loses value as well but but you did you did touch on very well just then yeah. about cashing in your nfts is is a is a big th is a big thing I, you can't do that with um things you buy in centralized games no. for like off-chain things i mean it is an investment you buy a sword in 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 world of warcraft or on the if it's on the blockchain you can sell it on if you're not interested in one, and it may uh in in, in uh, what's the word appreciate in value so yeah, yeah, so yeah. there is a, there is a, a logic logic reason for having nfts on that front for sure yeah, I think so. Like, it, I just think it just I mean a bit more evolution, a bit more education and a bit more sort of gently in, uh, applying it rather than perhaps Ubisoft's like, boom, we're going to do NFTs. And everyone's like, no, yeah, not yeah, that was that was <laughs> had to take down the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they did yeah no i i wrote an article on it and i was just had so much fun like scrolling through the thread under the youtube video the actual video wasn't that interesting but the actual thread was gold you know like people oh, going dim, like you said that you you said it a second ago like people thinking that a puppy dies every time an nft is is minted and we we, we we briefly spoke about elysium as a network there and it makes vulcan forge it makes the ecosystem environmentally friendly so let can we just talk about that on Elysium? You also mentioned that you plant trees, but you didn't go into it much. Let's go there. Like, let's talk about the environmental angle a little bit here. Yeah, sure. Well, we, there was a project that joined us called called Chorus, which had this cool idea that, that they, every sort of tree we had in Vulcanverse, they, they'd plant one on their plot in, in Spain they had. And we just love the idea that if you own the tree as an NFT, it's called NF tree, they call it. If you own the tree in Vulcanverse, you own yeah. it in real world. You can see it grow. So our community sort of suggested, well, we can take this to the next level. Let, let's sort of take a part of the gas fees we get from every transaction and put it into this big pot of of growing trees so we've got these like 500 to a thousand trees already sort of growing right now and we sort of then got more acres and we're, and we're going to be sort of pushing this forest so ideally we'd have this sort of live cam of this forest that would just would just grow over the years the more elysiums used and it, and it also saves our saves our butts a little bit when we do talk to companies if they want to join um and they're worried about the carbon thing as well we say well actually you know you you're, you're planting trees by using elysium and um yeah, actually yeah. we can say that five five of the biggest fashion brands in the world are actually coming to elysium and um the nda is expiring very very soon so we can announce that and the reason Ooh. the reason they are is because um because of the green thing i don't know if these these conglomerates actually really care about the green thing but it's easy for them to mention to their followers that, oh okay well we're choosing this one because they're planting trees so they cover their butts as well so yeah. um i i don't know the actual ins and outs of whether or not there is a carbon footprint i'm sure there is i'm sure you know there's no smoke without fire and um yeah so but uh, this kind of sort of covers all the base and it's a cool thing to do i mean just knowing that like the more your blockchains use you're making a forest it's just it, it's just it's yeah it's, it's a cool idea it's very cool very cool thing to do jamie i think i know as you say like in years to come you look out over your forest and that's kind of your work but in terms of the the tech stack of elysium how is that achieving um like an environmentally friendly status as well because it it, it is a different type of network isn't it and you're not minting nfts for example isn't costing the earth so no what, it's what not i mean it, it's a polka dot fork or something like that but I, i'm not a blockchain developer so i don't know the all i know is it is carbon neutral in terms of how it operates um but, and the tree thing is an extra add-on um but i i'd be doing our developers um a, a an injustice <laughs> if i try to explain what the hell i'm talking about <laughs> Uh, it makes, I think the, the polka dot thing you mentioned, it, it kind of then, yeah, you can kind of put the puzzle together a little bit if uh, for listeners who understand networks in a bit more depth. But uh, yeah, if you're interested in that, I'm sure the information is over on the Elysium website, so you can go and check that out over there. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So you just mentioned something very juicy then about NDAs and fashion brands. So I can't ask you to reveal it, but um, it sounds like there's some hot stuff happening on. Uh, yeah, really hot um, stuff. I mean, all, all household names. I mean, because a lot of these, these, these companies, metaverses uh, are coming in 
and, and asking us to build it for them. And one of them is called the Hustleverse, which is like a very sort of modern, <laughs> uh, a very, very mo modern metaverse. And they've got these amazing connections. Um, so they're, they're bringing in these, these fashion names. So it was so random from where we were a few years ago. And then you're speaking to like the CEO of these, of, of these these fashion brands which yeah. i actually i wear and then was some of my brand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and i'm talking to like the, the president about it and, and selling him on um, elysium and so they're joining but you know it, it makes sense because all the big brands are joining hsbc joining sandbox recently nike and adidas yeah. are joining so it made sense these other brands would come in somewhere it's just kind of cool that they've chosen us really because we are kind of obscure compared to some sandbox and ethereum and polygon you know vulcan yeah. forge isn't up there in terms of um uh exposure so um i guess this is the this is the names we need to kind of put us into tier one media i suppose yeah man like definitely it's uh the brand association is definitely going to rub off so that's great and also i'm just thinking out loud again that perhaps in decentraland the sandbox as much as they are those premium platforms you see news updates every day and perhaps in a few weeks it may become commonplace to see big brands launching there whereas in other networks it's not so you're actually going to catch more attention doing it that way i guess as well exactly yeah exactly i, I think but again it's, it's the trend metaverse is the trend everyone's trying to jump on it and uh yeah what can you do yeah i think so as well i mean is there anything else um jamie like we're getting towards the end of the session and it's been really cool and i think we've had some really good questions is there anything else no, that, i mean think... you've covered everything it's been absolutely wonderful talking to you and it's um it's very it's, it's very pleasant having a, an ama with someone that it feels more like a conversation than sort of like doing it for the sake <laughs> of doing it and um you know the, yeah i had a really good time and uh I, I urge anyone listening to sort of join our discord have a little talk um meet some people and join the game for free yeah. and um i appreciate you having me on no worries, man. It's been ace. And, and that's the whole point of these AMAs, Jamie, just to say that, like the whole idea of this is that when you people can go to that radar and they can look at dApps and they can see names and they can click them and they can see on chain metrics and it's all very read only. And these events are kind of to let people under the skin of the companies that are running things to get an idea of who they are how they kind of carry themselves, what their ethics are. And I think, again, as most people do here, you've articulated everything really, really well and kind of, yeah, you've, you've done your company proud, mate. You should be there. Thank you very yourself. much, matey. I appreciate <laughs> it. Thanks for having me on and no. um, stay in touch. Yeah, man, definitely. Well, we always try to like reconnect in a couple of like, we'll come back in a few months because there's obviously going to be things happening for you um, now that you're on your own chain and things like this and more, as you say, games uh, are not hard to produce, but it's more the uh, economics that you guys are working on. So right, I'm right. sure we'll see more from you guys and uh, yeah, we'll bring you back. So yeah, thank you, Jamie. That's been awesome. And uh, yeah, just to shout out finally, if people want to go over, you've got Discord. What, what are your socials, Jamie? Just to give a shout out to those so people can come and connect with you. Sure, yeah. Discord. And also, <laughs> sorry, I had one more question actually about is there any opportunity for the community of that radar and for your, yourselves to get involved more with Vulcan Forge? Do you have ambassador roles uh, within your chats? Do you, you know, those kind of things? Do you, is that something you're, you're working towards at the moment? For sure, we've got like this, we call it the Philosopher's Council, which is pretty much uh, ambas ambassadors, <laughs> basically. And right. um, <clears throat> once the blockchain comes out, we're going to have some um, some nodes, which is like some authority nodes that run it. And um, and there's lot, all, the, all the big guilds are in Vulcanverse. So I still don't know why Dap Radar hasn't, hasn't got a guild set up yet. I mean, if you do, we'll be the first ones to help you. Right. Yeah. Good idea, mate. Good idea. I'll put that towards <laughs> our dev team and they'll, they'll go to the dev team and tell them and they'll just pull out the black tape and put it over my mouth and say, we've got enough things to do. <laughs> We're busy, busy people. So, yes, uh, let's wrap this up. Thank you so much, Jamie, for your time. Um, that's all the time we've got for today. So a big thank you to all the people that tuned in uh, and a big thank you again to Jamie. And I hope and I hope you've all learned something today. And I would, uh, yeah, go and check out Vulcan Forge. Go and have a go on some games. As Jamie says, some of them are free to play jump in so tomorrow here on discord i've got my friends modesto and pedro they're going to be taking a deep dive into what influences an nft collections value is it fame or is it utility so they're going to take a dive into that and look at some top collections and see where the land lies there these sort those amas are really good if you really want to get a head start on things in this space these guys are talking about things that the normal well, i call them normal people will be talking about in a few weeks so get a head start guys so thanks again to my uh to jamie and the audience and i will see y'all next week don't forget to go to the chat and make yourself known so you can pick up your pope nft proof of attendance and for the guys that ask the questions we'll reach out to you and we'll sort this um 
token allocation out very shortly. So once again, thank you, Jamie. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you, Cornelia, in the background there for doing all the hard work. And we will see you next week.